Hi, and welcome to another episode of the City of Flagstaff Recovery Roundtable. My name is Jessica Drum, and I am the Public Affairs Director, and today I am lucky to be joined by Shannon Anderson, our one of our Deputy City Managers, and Jared Tolman, our Library Tur Director. And today we are going to be discussing some changes to city operations with regard to our COVID-19 reentry plan and updates to accessibility and options um, for some city facilities. And before we get into that, I just remind everyone that we have the full city's reentry plan as well, uh, um, the reentry plan as well as uh, resources for local citizens, businesses, and nonprofits all available on the website. You can also watch any previous recovery roundtable on a whole host of topics um, under our COVID-19 resources pages. Uh, so feel free to check that out. And Shannon, thank you for joining us. Can you give folks an update? I know that the city has moved into phase three of our reentry plan very recently. What does that mean and how can folks expect to see things different or what has changed at city facilities and operations? Uh, thank you, Jessica. Um, probably one of the biggest changes uh, that you'll see is we are starting to allow the reentry of the public into our facilities. Um, we are still doing a restricted practice, so we ask that individuals come if they have business purposes uh, within City Hall. Uh, we've got hours Monday through Friday from 10 until 2. Um, that does give us some additional time to make sure that we're doing that deep sanitizing between visits. Um, you'll also see some cues um, as you walk into the building. Uh, we ask that folks enter off of Aspen Avenue only. We have doors designated for entrance exits, um, as well as signage reminding them if they're experiencing any COVID like symptoms uh, to please just continue uh, to do their services remotely. Um, the city will continue offering all of the remote services that we have been. Um, we're just adding some face-to-face uh, -face interaction uh, at our city hall, uh, as well as some of our other um, facilities soon. We are continuing to monitor uh, data from Coconino County Health and Human Services. Uh, we look to them as our county health department to provide us with necessary guidelines. Um, if we have questions about, you know, is our HVAC ventilating enough? Uh, they're great experts to include along with our facility staff. Uh, so they've been a great partner. They have lots of good information um, on their website, uh, and then we meet with them weekly as one of the county partners. That's great, Shannon. So if folks need to come and they want to pay a bill, they can just walk in and utilize that customer service desk um, in the front of City Hall off of that Aspen entrance. But if they have um, business or if they need, they would like to conduct business with um, a different department, they need to make an appointment. Is that correct? Yeah, it's best to make an appointment to make sure that the individual that you want to meet with is actually going to be there in person because we do still have employees who are working remotely. Uh, it's a way that we can allow for social distancing within the workplace uh, is to make sure that we're not bringing everyone back at once. Um, so it's always a good idea to, uh, if you're going to meet with someone face to face, um, that you're scheduling that appointment. So that way they have the opportunity to talk about partner uh, parking. They have the opportunity to talk about our mask policy. Um, and that way the two individuals can decide, are they going to meet you know, over the phone or via a Microsoft Teams meeting, or are they going to absolutely meet face to face in City Hall? Thank you, Shannon. Um, that is really good to know. And if you have any questions about that, you can always contact City Hall, you can call 213-2015 or contact the constituent that you would like to meet with um, directly, or no, sorry, not the constituent, the City Hall or the city employee, you can contact them directly. Um, and Jared, so Shannon has covered the impacts to city operations from an administrative standpoint and from City Hall. What can we expect from the library as we move into um, or as we are now in phase three, how have operations at the library shifted? Because I know you've still been, I mean, the library has still been operating. You have had record breaking checkouts over COVID um, and experience. I mean, you've stayed as busy um, just in a slightly different format. So how is that shifting with phase three? Thanks, Jessica. Yeah, you know, once COVID happened, we really looked at how do we serve our community now, now that people can't come into the building. 
And so obviously we started our curbside service. And as you mentioned, it's been successful. We have had more people place holds than we have ever seen um, record breaking numbers on our holds. And so people have been able to continue to access that material, check out what they need, get on the catalog, see what's available and, and make those. We've also redone all of our programs. Those all went virtual to where we would create the program, post it on our website and on YouTube, and you could go and watch it at your leisure and, and still get a lot of that program. Even our book clubs have gone remote. And so it's all digital to where they're continuing to have those services. The one area in which we were not able to serve the community was with the public computers. Obviously, having people coming into the building during the whole COVID was, was an issue. And because uh, city council was not allowing anyone into the buildings at, the, at that time, we weren't able to do that. And so we thought that would be the first best place to start with reopening the library. And so what we've done is Monday and Wednesday from, um, sorry, excuse me, Monday through Friday here at the main library, we're open from 10 to 2, where people can make a reservation to come get on the public computers. And we've, um, you know, set up the computers to where they're, um, they're, there's enough room in between users that six feet are being, is being um, observed and people can come in and use those. And then we actually rotate through the computers so that no one's really using a second computer right after someone else has and, and it gives staff time to clean those computers before they end up getting used again. And so that's really what we've set up and, and we feel this is real um, benefit to our community to keep them safe and to get them back into the building using the, those services. And so most people can call into the library and make that reservation or they can come up, do a walk up to the library and make a reservation. Um, some people who have smartphones that are looking to use an actual computer, they can get online and even access the reservation themselves and make a reservation. And so we'll have staff here to kind of help them on the hour, bring them in, show them where they'll be sitting um, they can use it for 45 minutes and then the computer will shut down and, and they'll be let out by staff as well. And that will give staff time to clean the computers and whatnot before they get used again. Um, our restrooms will now also be available to those who are making reservations. Uh, we've done that with the main library. The East Library is a little bit different, even though today, today is the 14th and we're able to um, have those services start here at the main library. Our East Library won't be opening up till the 28th. They, they're they a lot smaller, and so a lot of the bugs that we need to work out of this system, we're, we're doing it here at the main library so we can get that experience and then open the East Library on the 28th. And their hours will be Monday and Wednesday from two to six, and then uh, Friday and Saturday from 10 to two they'll be open for that same computer services. Our curbside service, our digital programs, that will continue during this time so that people can continue to get the materials they need. They can continue to participate in programs. And by doing this, as Shannon mentioned, it allows staff and us to help do the social distancing, keep staff safe, keep the public safe, which is really our, our main focus. And then as months continue and we continue to see declines in our community, we'll open it up for further services such as browsing and using the self-checkout. You know, those things will eventually become available as time goes on and we continue to see a decline in our community. So when folks are interested, they if they make a reservation, they call the library and they make this reservation. Uh, that is just for using the computer browsing. That is not to browse the shelves and to look for checkouts. You should still utilize, and you can also call the library for that, um, but to do checkouts. Yeah. Um, and to, I'm sorry, not checkouts, holds, but to request books and, and library materials. Yeah. At this time, we're still asking that people continue to use the curbside service and we'll get those materials prepped and ready for you. Um, and as, as I mentioned before, as we see those declines and, and we're looking to the county and, and seeing what the stats are for the cases in our community, as we continue to see those decline, we'll get to a point where definitely we're allowing people, we'll probably do what most businesses have been doing in the community and allowing a certain number in the building at one given time, just so that we don't overcrowd the library. Um, and you'll be able to peruse the materials, find what you need, 
check it out through the self checkout and be on your way. And then other people can come in if, if there is a line. But again, that is a little farther off. Um, but it is something we are working to to allow the the more people into the library. And as as we continue to work out those details and see cases declining, we'll get to that point. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jared, for that update. And Shannon, one other point that I wanted, I know we've received a number of questions um, from constituents uh, is relating or re regarding the accessibility of the city's uh, recreation and um, amenities and facilities. Um, and I was wondering if we could talk just a little bit about that and what folks can look for um, in the coming um, in the coming week. I will have or coming weeks about our recreation and facilities amenities and parks. <laughs> So Parks and Recreation um, has worked to allow permitting on our fields again, so that is underway. That was one of the first things uh, that we worked towards. Um, now we are working on getting staff um, to return. Most of the Recreation and Parks employees, um, or many of them, were furloughed um, at the onset of the pandemic and the closure of our facilities to the public. Um, so their first job is to see how many of those individuals are still available to come back and work on behalf of the city. Uh, once they have their staffing in place, they'll be able to assess what type of hours they'll be able to have in our recreation facilities. I think it's also important to note that Arizona Department of Health Services also has the attestation approval process for indoor gyms and fitness centers. And so the Aquaplex as well as Hal Jensen will have to go through that process prior to being able to reopen. Thank you so much. And I know as soon as we have a bit more information and updates about the recreation um, facilities, we'll be uh, doing a recovery roundtable hopefully in the next week or so with, with the city's Parks and Recreation Department to be able to provide um, an update to the community. So please stay tuned for more information on that and further updates. And thank you so much, uh, Jared and Shannon, for taking the time to talk to me today. And as always, please submit any questions to a future recovery roundtable at recovery roundtable at flagstaffaz.gov. Thank you, Jessica. Thanks.